Okay, here we have something a little bit different. These are all neon lamps, but they have awkward size bases. This one there is a festoon type, and I believe it was used in the old trolley buses that used to run on our streets in, in London. The one next to it, I could use a normal screw base, but um, we'll try it on, on this. That's just a small SES neon half watt. The one next to that's rather an unusual one, an American one. Don't know yet whether it's argon or neon. We'll have to wait and see. And the tube at the back is also a neon tube. Um, I don't know what it was used for. As you can see, the electrodes are just at each end. I don't know if I can actually show you it. It's just kind of... I'm going to hold it up. Let's have a look. Still not sure that clear, is it? There's the electrodes. They're like a twisted electrode at each end. And there's the other end. I don't know how to say I'm... Um, having difficulty making, oh there we are, it's focused now. So it's just a little electrode at each end. There is writing on it. It's CV264 underneath that is ZABK. Now CV was the British standard for valves and other devices um, so it still doesn't tell me what it was used for but as you see it's got two little hooks on the end which make it nice and handy to test. I'm testing these on the old Rumpfworth coil because I don't want to blow anything up. Although the voltage is high the current is very very low and the only person likely to get a shock is me as I hold it on. So we'll have a little look at those. I'll just set it up and we'll have a look. Right we've set the coil going. Now let's see what happens. If I suddenly jump I've got a shock. We're placing it near to two, well we'll touch it on one end. And as you see, we're actually jumping across to light it up. And we actually make it light without it touching on either end. It's just in the air and it's, it's lighting up. lighting up one end touching or just touching by me touching it on the other end I can make it strike the tube's not actually touching anything except me at one end. And there's the other end there. So you can see the lamp. When it goes touches it, it overruns it and it turns blue. But that is proving that tube works. Needless to say, if I was to touch both ends, I'd be jumping about. Right, the bulb we're going to try now is this Osglim lamp, which I'm pretty sure came out of a trolley bus. It's Osglim, rated at 220 volts. We'll try that. The two plates, as you can see, very close, but not actually touching. Try and get a bit clearer, so we can see that very clearly. Anyway, let's give that a little whirl. As you can see, I'm probably here to make a nice crackling sound. 
and it's becoming our lives. Now it is not touching either end, it's drawing an arc at either end of the length. And as you can see, it's working perfectly. Right, we're back again. This time I've made the electrodes a bit closer so I can actually do things and see what's happening. which would happen on DC. Direct current, you only get one side of the lamp. The other lamp that I was going to show you, I've just discovered that it doesn't work. I'm going to hear it. It's sparking like a good one. And that's about all it's doing. The D if the tube bulb itself was okay, it would be glowing red. But, as you can see, the spark's jumping all around it, and it's not. So what I would think has happened, the seal has gone, and the gas has escaped. One of those things. Can't be helped. I've probably got more of these somewhere. So anyhow, that was what was we were shown, um, just thinking if there's anything else I, I, that I can demonstrate. Let me have a think. Now we're back again. We'll try a few, a few experiments with a beehive. That is the gas becoming ionised in the lamp itself. These lamps were often used in the old days to test the strength of a transmitter. Uh, the days of CB, you could hold one of these lamps near to an aerial and when you were transmitting the lamp would glow inside and that was the space charge within the actual lamp, it would glow and that would show that the, the aerial was in fact radiating out and by going down the length of the aerial you could find any hot spots within it because the lamp would light up brighter. Just a point of in, in, in interest, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else, yep there is something I can show you also. I'm trying to make these talks a little bit more interesting I find you know I can probably talk quite a lot this lamp is another beehive this time made by uh, Philips and it's one that's been well used and this is just put in as an example